What's up guys, DWK Videos. If you're new to my channel, I make military content, put it on the internet for you guys. If you wanna follow my social media, it's in the links down below. <clears throat> Today we're gonna be talking about what you need to know before going into boot camp. Navy boot camp specifically, as you can tell by the very cringe thumbnail I used with the Navy boot camp hat. This is gonna come straight from your start guide, which is the booklet they give you when you dip into the Navy. Why this video is so important and why you should favor this video if you're in depth, leave it a like. If you're coming in as an E1, you're gonna take the depth advancement test, right? If you pass this test, you are now eligible to go from E1 to E2 in boot camp. Of course, you have to pass your physical and educational tests after that, but this is the like main thing you have to pass. No one should be an E1 in the Navy. They literally made this to give you a pay raise off the bat. Don't be dumb, study what I'm about to tell you. So around the second or third page, they're gonna get to the Navy core values, honor, courage, commitment. You're gonna hear this all the time throughout, ah, bit my tongue while saying that. You're gonna hear this all the time throughout Navy boot camp. Honor, I will bear true faith and allegiance. Courage, I will support and defend. Commitment, I will obey the orders. Of course, interpret those how you will. It's a pretty broad spectrum of what that could mean to you. The 11 general orders of a century. This you're gonna have to repeat out to yourself. When I was learning this, I had to put it on flashcards and just read them back and forth. There's no real easy way to do this besides repetition, but let's go ahead and jump through it. Your first general order is to take charge of this post and all government property in view. Second general order, to walk my post in a military manner, keeping always on the alert and observing everything that takes place with insider hearing. Third general order, to repeat all violations of orders I'm instructed to enforce. Fourth general order, to repeat all calls from posts more distant from the guardhouse than my own. Fifth general order, to quit my post only when properly relieved. That's when people get in trouble for overseas. Abandoning your post will mess you up because it's in the general orders. Number six is the long one, and for me it's the most easiest most easiest one to remember because it's the longest it really sticks out to receive obey and pass on to the sentry who relieves me all orders from the commanding officer command duty officer officer of the deck and officers and petty officers of the watch only seventh general order to talk to no one except in the line of duty eighth general order to give the alarm in case of fire disorder actually that's probably the easiest one to remember eight fire nine to call the officer of the deck in any case not covered by instructions ten to salute all officers and all colors and standards, not case. For those of you in depth, colors is the national emblem, the flag, right here. Number 11, to be especially watchful at night and during times for challenging, to challenge all persons on or near my post and allow no one to pass without proper authority. So now you know our core values, honor, courage, commitment. You know the 11 general orders. There's always the one drill instructor that's gonna be like, what's your 12th general order? to catch you off and you're gonna repeat one of the general orders you randomly know off the top of your head, but there is no 12th general order. So, gotcha, I guess. The RTC maximum, maximum, this is only relevant while you're in boot camp, but I will not lie, cheat, or steal. Think about Eddie Guerrero for those WWE stan, stands, fans. I will not lie, cheat, or steal, nor tolerate those among us who do. AK, you catch anyone doing any of those, you will rot them out. The Sailor's Creed, this is relevant throughout your entire career of Navy, and you're gonna have to re be able to repeat this verbatim, <clears throat> especially when you're at boards. So later on in this career, why this re later on in your career, why this is relevant. So you're going up for Sailor a year, J Blue Jacket of the Quarter, for those of you who are just joining the floor rankings. You go ahead and knock on the door, come in, you're gonna say, Attention to the Sailor's Creed. Everyone stands up when this is happening. If you're passing someone who's saying the Sailor's Creed while you're in the Navy, you literally have to stop what you're doing, stand at attention until they're finished. I am a United States Sailor. I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States of America, and I'll obey the orders of those appointed over me. I represent the fighting spirit of the Navy and those who have come before me to defend freedom and democracy around the world. I proudly serve my country's Navy combat team with honor, courage, and commitment. I'm committed to excellence and the fair treatment of all. Take a pause right there, and then if you're the one saying it, you can be like, at ease, and then everyone will stop being at attention. Every single board I've stood so far has had that. Bruno, stop chewing on the wall! RTC chain of command. Where this comes in context in boot camp, when you're doing your uniform inspections, they're gonna come up, look you up and down, and they're gonna ask you a question. A lot of times they pull from this. So from the top to the bottom, you have the President of the United States, Secretary of the Defense, Secretary of the Navy, Chief of Naval Operations, Master Chief Petty Officer in the Navy, Chief of Naval Personnel, Commander, Naval Education and Training Command, relevant to while you're at RTC, because once you're RTC, that's no longer in your chain of command. NETC Force Master Chief Petty Officer, Commander, Naval Service Training Command, NSTC Command Master Chief Petty Officer, Commanding Officer, Recruit Training Command, Executive Officer, Recruit Training Command, Military Training Director, Military Training Director, Leading Chief Petty Officer, 
Fleet Commander, Fleet Leading Chief Petty Officer, Ships Officer, Ships Leading Chief Petty Officer, Recruit Division Commander. Your Recruit Division Commanders are your drill instructors, so those are the easiest ones to get. But if you want to, go ahead, type those, replay the video, type those into Google and find out who those are now and write them down on flashcards. In, in your start guide, it's gonna talk about certain positions you can hold while in boot camp. I'm not gonna dive into those because those aren't a necessity of what you need to know. Like, there's gonna be a mail petty officer, right? And that's the guy who goes and gets your mail from downstairs and then hands it out to people. Is that relevant to you guys right now? Not really. I mean, at the time, if you want a position, good on you but re realistically it doesn't matter it the positions don't matter next one we're gonna go through a little bit of drill i'll be standing up for this make it a little easier move the tripod back we'll jump into it all right now that you can see me kind of standing so we'll go through positions first is position of attention what you're gonna do there's gonna be a seam on your pants kind of want to act like you're holding a little thing of quarters right you be standing like this you're not marine so it's not going to be all moto with your arms bent down to your sides like you're holding pennies, right, on the seams of your jeans. Parade rest, you're gonna get told to go to parade rest a lot when someone specifically is gonna get chewed out. Also, you can't talk at parade rest while in the Navy. In the Marine Corps, you talk at parade rest while you're talking to someone senior, a little bit different. If that, if you're a corpsman, that's gonna apply to eventually when you go greenside. But parade rest, put your arms like this, essentially, at the small of your back. Arms spread across shoulder length, and this is what parade rest looks like. At ease, it's kind of like parade rest, except you can be more relaxed, put your arms out in front of you. Fall out, if you're at parade rest, they first call you at attention. Most of the positions you have to be at attention for. So if you're in a different position, they call you at attention first before calling it. So you're at parade rest, they'll say attention. When they say fall out, you can literally just walk away. Uncover, this is gonna be uh, specifically during drill and during boards, so let's say you have your cover on green side right now, so that's why I don't have a navy cover, but go ahead, imagine your cover's on, you'll be at attention, they'll say uncover, and then they'll say two, and then you can pull it off. Same thing for cover, they'll be like cover, you put it on, adjust it, and then when they say two, that's when you can lower your hand. Facing movements, probably what your, <laughs> probably what your recruiter is teaching you right now, that's what my recruiter taught me. <clears throat> so you have left face, well, actually let me put this on my feet. So while you're at attention, right, they say left face, your left foot's gonna go up, this one's gonna go forward. So left face like that, plant and left. Right face, kind of same thing. So the foot closest to the side, the heel's gonna stay down and the opposite foot's gonna go towards the toes, so. Right face, like that. It's not gonna, you, you do it simultaneously, it doesn't look as weird as that. So left face, right face, right face, and then there's an about face. This one's gonna get everyone, let me kinda put it like this, when you do about face, come here, I'm gonna do a flip a roo. Flip a -roo. That one's gonna take tons of practice, guys. You're not gonna get that on the first time. If you are, then hey, good on you, but when they say about face, plan it, come around, Flip. For alignment, you're gonna dress to the right. Pretty much when you're aligned, you can dress normally at a close arm interval. Hand salute, tons of people get this wrong. Go like this with your thumb, guys. I'm saving you time, go like this, go like this, all right? Not like this, like this. <clears throat> gonna be at attention, bring it up just above the eyebrow. Doesn't matter where your cover is, just bring it up above the eyebrow. Do this with your right hand. Doesn't matter if you're left-handed. I swear to God, I've seen an officer. Some officers don't have to go through OCS or boot camp. They go through like a like a one week um, etiquette course. Um, some of them don't learn how to do it the right way. Don't salute with your left hand. And this one's gonna be the easiest. Flashcard city, vocab is always easy. I should always say you should get vocab right. Regardless of what test you take, if there's vocab involved, that should be 100%. That's just repeating something. You don't have to really coherently understand anything, just regurgitate it but we're gonna understand it. A drift, you're gonna hear this a lot, gear drift, something's out of place. Imagine a messy room and say your PS4 controller is on your bed. Put it where it's supposed to be and then it's not gear drift. Aft end is near the near or toward the stern of the vessel. All hands, just think about everybody. So if you're in a room, if you're, <laughs> if you're in a department and they say, hey, all hands meeting, every single person's going. In allotment, you're gonna have this with pay. If you're doing the Montgomery GI Bill, you're gonna have allotment every month paying into it, which means uh, a quantity of your money is getting pulled out and put into something else. That's an allotment. II, um, really boot camp. Uh, I don't hear many people say II in the fleet. I hear I, uh, but you'll say II in boot camp. Barracks, think about it as dorm rooms, like colleges or apartments. More like dorm rooms. <laughs> Below, 
It's downstairs, self-explanatory. Bright work, I have yet to hear this in the fleet once. Um, bright or shiny thing. Bunk or rack, that is your bed. Everyone calls it racks, getting your racks. Buoy, if you don't know what that is, it's like a navigation thing. You can throw it in the water and tell where something is. Yeah, I know, I just had to do it wrong. Oh. Carry on, you're gonna hear this at the end of speeches. So say everyone's cleaning and then chief walks in, they're like ears and everyone goes open and they listen to the chief, chief says what they say and, they, and then they say carry on and then you go about cleaning again. Cast off is to throw off, let go, throw away. No one says that. Chain locker is the compartment in which the chain is stowed. A chit, you're gonna hear this all the time. Especially medical, because I'm a corpsman, I hear, you know, <clears throat> sick call chit, um, like duty chit, stuff like that. A chit is just a piece of paper that you write on. Like any, anything can be a chit. A special request chit is a piece of paper specially requesting to do something. A light duty chit is a piece of paper that a doctor wrote on saying that you are sick, right? Chit, just think of paper with like signatures on it. Chow hall, mess deck, obviously is the cafeteria of elementary schools. Colors is the raising or lowering of the national flag. Deep six is to throw something over the side of the ship. An ensign has two meanings. It's either the national flag or a commissioned officer. As you know, Navy ranks are different than everyone else's. So an ensign is actually our 01. If you don't know the Navy ranks, go ahead and watch one of my old videos covering the Navy rank. To fast something is to like secure it down. A fathom. I don't remember this one, but it's in your book. A unit of length equal to six feet, used for measuring depth of water. Actually might be useful to you guys. Flag officers are the same across all branches. It's an 07 or higher. A galley is the kitchen. Gear locker is a storage room. Gee dunk, um, people use this sarcastically from what I've known. Um, it's just the name for like candy and treats or sweets, as you will. If you have a, a gee dunk locker, then someone, some department is selling sweets and using that for some Navy function. You'll see it with like CPO 365 and they're selling stuff. General quarters is battle stations. Liberty is your time off when you can leave the base. It's not leave. Liberty, you have a specific range you can go before you have to return back to the base. Lifelines are those nets you see uh, off the side of the ship just in case someone falls, they fall into the lifeline. And overhead is the ceiling. You're gonna use that term a lot in boot camp. Passageway is a hallway. Quarters is like an assembly of people so you can picture all hands or just like, you know, Monday quarters is when before on Monday morning after weekend everyone shows up and say, hey, I'm still alive, I didn't go to jail, you know? A rating is a job or specialty if, you need a, if you're in another, <laughs> A rating is a job or specialty. If you're in another military branch, then it's the same as an MOS. Reveille, reveille, again, used in boot camp. No one says it outside of boot camp, but it's when you wake up. Scullery, place to wash dishes. Sick bay is the hospital part of the ship. Really, it's just sick hall or medical. Scuttlebutt is the funniest acronym on this whole list, but it actually means drinking fountain. I, I don't know, man, it's an old thing. Scuttlebutt? Scuttlebutt is a, a water fountain. That's what they call it, scuttlebutt. Swab, swab the deck, you can use your own imagination. Taps, lights out, it's time to sleep. Tattoo, five minutes before tap. Top side, upstairs. Turn two is to begin work. You know, say someone's talking to you and then they say turn two and you would start the task they just gave you. Working aloft is working way up high. Military time, military time is on phonetic alphabet. I'll just go ahead and pop that up on the screen. You can read through it. Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, etc. Noon. And then after that, instead of going to one, it goes to 13. So 13 is one, 14 is two. If you think about it, it's just two hours behind what it really is. So if I say it's 16, it's actually four. So what's two minus six? It's four, right? If it's 22, it's 10. If it's 24, it's 12. And then after that, it restarts. There you go, I just taught you military time in like seconds. Your recruiter owes me his soul. Ranks and insignia, I actually made a video about this. So if you go on my channel and you click on uploads, you'll see Navy ranks 2018, click on that, and that'll go through all the ranks. And boom, just like that, you guys are gonna pass Navy boot camp, I assume. Uh, don't sue me if you don't. I feel like someone's gonna like bail out Navy boot camp. I'm gonna have a lawsuit saying, oh, I thought if I watch DWK videos and left a like, then I would pass boot camp. What the? <laughs> Hope that helped you guys out. I know I have a lot of Deadpool subscribers, so see you guys.